DeSoto National Wildlife Refuge provides sanctuary for wildlife, especially migratory birds. Spring migration means it is a terrific time to visit, but that's not the only thing waiting for you. Peter Ray is here to explain what's going on. It's nice to have you with it's us. Nice to have Welcome. Thanks. I mean, this is your first visit to the show, but we love DeSoto. Yeah. Well, it's a great place, mm -hmm. and this time of year is especially cool mm -hmm. uh, because it's really what DeSoto is all about, and well, that's the spring migration. Well, that's why we're glad you're with us now yeah. because the weather's going to start to get nice. We exactly. want to get out. We want to stretch our legs. We want to see things. We want to learn. With migratory birds, why is DeSoto an important place? So the analogy I like to use is it's a rest stop for birds. Mm -hmm. So just like when we're going on a road trip, mm -hmm. you know, we need places where we can stop. We stop at you know, gas stations, we stop for food, we stop for all that kind of stuff. Birds need that too. Mm -hmm. And in the case of birds, they're not stopping at Mickey D's. They're not stopping at Motel 8. They're stopping at places like DeSoto. And what and do they get when they, when they swing through? So at DeSoto, our big thing is wetlands. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the wetlands provide them with a smorgasbord of food, mm -hmm. uh, insects, plant material. And it also provides a sanctuary where they're yeah. going to have like minimal disturbance from humans. You brought in several examples of migratory birds. You want to take us through these so we can, you know, once you get there to DeSoto, you know what you're looking at. Yeah. So the migration comes in phases. Here. And uh, and the first big phase is the big flocks and ducks and geese. Mm -hmm. And uh, the early warm spell kind of had that big phase already go through. But we yeah. still have quite a few ducks. And so over here we got... Uh, the camera's on the, the yeah. northern shovel, and that one's unique. If you look, it has a really big bill, and they use that big bill to filter through the water and uh -huh. pick out the insects and stuff like that. His so that's, feathers are gorgeous, yeah, too. Look very like pretty color. blue. I don't know that I've ever noticed before yep. the coloration. And the, uh, the male, that's a male, uh -huh. is going to be the most colorful. Well, so if I brought a female, is. it that, wouldn't be quite I'm as pretty. I'm going to be honest. That yeah. always ticks me off. I don't get that about Mother yeah. Nature. I so think gotta, the girls should be pretty, too. They've got to so they got to look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about this one? Uh, this is a wood duck. So this is one of the, you know, one of the prettier types of ducks. Again, it's a male. Mm -hmm. It likes to hang out in uh, flooded timber, secluded ponds. Uh, and it eats, uh, it eats a lot of insects and also acorns and nuts and stuff like uh -huh. that. Okay, this next one, tell us about him. So this one, uh, if you get a look at the wing, that's the, the key. That's called a, yeah, that's called a blue wing teal. And it's one of the smaller duck species. And actually when these start to arrive, which we have been seeing them, uh, that's a sign that the duck migration is wrapping up because okay. they're the last to come through in Got the spring. Uh -huh. And they're actually coming from all the way down Central America, even South America wow. is where they winter. And they at. make it all the way up to our neck of the woods. Yeah. When do we see these birds? Because this, for you and I both, this is our favorite. Oh, yeah. out I, of what I we love have these. These are probably the most unique looking ones. And what are they called, They're Peter? called a hooded merganser. Mm -hmm. So you got the uh, the male has the black and white, and then the female is more of a brownish color. Uh -huh. And uh, you can see them this time of year at DeSoto. Uh, they like to dive underneath the water and catch minnows, uh, crawdads, uh, you know, frogs, stuff like that. And they use that serrated bill to uh, to catch their food yeah. and then they just swallow it whole. You, I don't know that you can see it um, on television and I'll hold it still but inside it is it's like a bread knife. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly that I, that like idea bread knife. inside yep. their bill. Exactly. But that's completely function. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. And then finally we've got one more bird Peter. What is this? Yeah and this obviously it's not a duck and uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of the next phase of the migration that we're going to start seeing and that's a shorebird. And uh, shorebirds uh, come in after the ducks, and they, they like to wade in the wetlands. They have the, typically have long uh, legs, a long bill, and they use those long legs to wading in the wetlands, walking on mud flats, and then they pick insects with their, their long bill. Uh -huh. And uh, this is actually called an American avocet. So it's a type of shorebird that we will see at DeSoto. He looks, he looks like he's got a lot of personality. Yeah, and they're, they're fun to watch because <laughs> right. a lot of times they're, they're not as disturbed as ducks are. Uh -huh. So you can sit there and watch them watch. feed and they have some unique characteristics. Well, them. DeSoto National Wildlife Refuge also houses something else. If you're wondering about the other objects here in front of us, the Bertrand Steamboat Museum collection is there. What does that collection consist of? Yeah, so April 1st, 1865, the, uh, the Bertrand Steamboat was making its maiden voyage up the Missouri mm -hmm. River and it sunk at what is now DeSoto National Wildlife mm. Refuge. Uh, nobody, everybody was off, but all the cargo was left behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in 1968, it uh, was discovered. All the artifacts were pulled up and they were in perfect condition. Yeah, and wow. it was amazing. And, and, uh, and all that stuff is 
on the in the collection at the Soto National mm -hmm. Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center. We're looking at some of the images um, mm -hmm. of the collection there in place, but then what did you bring to show us today, Peter? So, so these are replicas. So there's a lot of different types of bottles that are on display at mm -hmm. the visitor center. Uh, there was a lot of liquor, so I was going to a mining town, so they <laughs> okay. needed their booze. Uh -huh. <laughs> but then there was also a lot of food items. So this is actually a replica of a uh, ketchup bottle. Oh, wow. And uh, ketchup was important because their food was fairly bland, so they needed some spice. Mm -hmm. And this is actually uh, a honey jar that, wow. that honey was stored in. And some of the, the bottles at the visitor center still have the food. The that, product. Yeah, the in, product in actually them. in them. And then what is this item? So I described the Bertrand, uh, when people asked what was on it, I described it as a, a floating Walmart because okay. it literally had like a little You've bit of everything. You've got an analogy every yeah. for everything, yeah. Peter. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and in this case, this is an actual artifact from the steamboat, so it's not a replica, and it's ice skates. Uh -huh. So there's three pairs of ice skates that were found. Were on the boat. So, you know, it had a lot of tools, but it also had stuff for recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. So you can see the wooden base and it actually had uh, uh, places where straps could go and to, then to tie speaking to of boots. footwear yep and so again it was going to a mining town so uh, you know working people mining and in this case here you can hold that the bottom of uh, that though this is a, a men's work that boot so that would go up to the knee uh -huh. and you can see the bottom of it the hobnails it actually uh, forms an intricate little pattern on yes. it that forms a leaf isn't that and that provided a little bit of uh, traction wow. helped uh, minimize wear. There's, a, there's something coming and you said that it sank on April 1st which is why you have this anniversary program yeah. and you, you run it for a couple of days the first and the second yeah. from 1 to 3 o'clock um, and so a quick word about what's happening during so, those two days. Yeah so uh, it's, it's a way for the public to come out to, to relearn about the Bertrand mm -hmm. to, uh, to recognize uh, you know the anniversary of the sinking mm -hmm. and we're gonna have uh, at 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock we're gonna have uh, uh, gallery walks through the cargo area looking at these artifacts by the curators. Mm -hmm. We're also going to have uh, films about the excavation of the yeah. Bertrand and then we're going to have family friendly uh, craft and activities for kids mm -hmm. to come through and do that as well. So, If you're going to DeSoto you can get in for a couple of bucks if you just want to take one yep. car in for one day. Yep. But I think Peter you might encourage our viewers to look at an annual pass if you're, yeah. you're going and you want to really get a lot for your money. Um, inquire about that as well if you're maybe going for that anniversary program on the first or second or you want to go and see if you can spot some of the birds. Don't hesitate. It's DeSoto National Wildlife Refuge and online. You see the website? We'll yep. link you back to our site too in case you didn't get a jot all of that down. We've got you covered at OmahaMorningBlend.com. Peter, so nice to meet you. Please yep. come back. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. Still mm -hmm. ahead, 